Well, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, the Rutherford Sports Network. I'm sure you've probably heard all you can bear about the news and all of that, so uh, I won't go into anything like that except to just tell you the reason I'm doing this is just to um, unwind a bit, give it everything that's happened yesterday. Um, it's been crazy. The whole year has been crazy. All of last year has been crazy. And we've had a fundamental change in the way we live life nowadays. And I think it's important to remember that change is hard. And that sometimes change is necessary. So I'm going to talk about change right now. And what I think needs to change in the world of sports. First of all, given what we've seen in the college level of sports and the high school level of sports, we need to do make a commitment. Ooh, I almost fell back in my chair there for a second there. We must make a commitment to make sure that we don't sacrifice a lot of these sports for um, monetary reasons. There's a reason why we have them in there, and that's to encourage more students to participate. And here, here's my thing. We talk a lot about wanting to encourage our youth to get off, up, off their butts, get away from their smartphones and their tablets, and to get out more and play. Well, um, given the fact that in most cases, um, most people don't trust their kids to go down the block to uh, play with the local kids like we they, we used to do. I mean, I, I can remember back when I was a kid, I wouldn't just go acro ar uh, across the block. I'd go blocks away on my bicycle, and sometimes halfway across town, all I get to tell, do is tell my mom where I'm at. And that was good enough back then. <laughs> Nowadays, um... Going over three houses over, and you got people going, hmm, that mom doing all right by her kid by doing that? <laughs> I think we need to encourage school systems to look into bringing, either bringing back or starting up intramural programs for kids who may not be varsity level athletes or even junior varsity at level athletes. We need to encourage more recreational departments to start up uh, more rec leagues to staff them responsibly so that our youth have an outlet to go to. Um, now, you hear some people go, well, they can go clean up, you know, go do chores and all that. Here's the thing that a lot of these people who say, we don't need to spend money on this, forget. A lot of this is meant to help build character. A lot of this is meant to help get children involved in the community more. And a lot of this is aimed at helping to see the kids to see the community in a positive light, to see themselves in a positive light. Uh, in my opinion, I felt like I was a better student when I was able to get into extracurricular activities and realized I had to keep my grades up so that I could participate in these extracurricular activities. And I think it's important for people to remember that because if you don't, if you fail to remember that, folks, um, you know, you, you know, if, if all your kids doing going to school is just going to school, that gets boring very quickly. They don't have they don't feel like they have the sense of investment. I highly encourage any parent to encourage their student to get into extracurricular activities, whether it be anything as simple as a pep club or a newspaper or whatever, or something as simple as a sci-fi club or something like that. That We should do more of that to encourage students to get more involved in their schools. To, so it's not just a sitting in classes for six hours a day and then go home and do your homework. 
There should be more than that. And I think finding ways to involve more students in that and helping parents get their students involved in this stuff, um, I think it's very critical. I think having an intramural program where students can simply have fun playing sports. And yeah, you, you would learn how to accept losses and wins. You'd learn how to improve your performance on the field, but you wouldn't be so focused on winning. It's building characters, building, it's learning life lessons. And sometimes learning a life lesson means learning how to deal when you don't win. When things aren't going your way. And honestly, in my opinion, I think in many cases, parents aren't letting their children understand what it's like to fail at something. That it's not necessarily a bad thing. It helps you understand what you're good at, what your strengths are, and also how you can improve upon your failures. How you can improve, how you turn failure into success. And I think that's very important because it's easy to just try something and give up. And I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of things I've tried and gave up and wish I hadn't given up on. Playing guitar and playing piano is a couple of things I, I can mention right off the bat. I gave up because I got tired of them and lost interest in them. And I kind of wish I hadn't done that now. But um, I think it's important to remember that we need to get kids involved in intramurals and get them back into um, into that kind of thing and get them involved in extracurricular activities. We need to put more money in the, into them, in my opinion, and get more teachers involved. Get to give teachers more money to uh, do extracurricular activities and sponsor programs and all of that. That's important because... Teaching a child, it cannot just be in the classroom and giving them a grade. There's more to it than that. So I think we, when we learn that, we learn a lot. <sighs> okay, but we got, and here's another thing. Um, Cleveland Community College is starting up a, their intramural, not intramural, I'm sorry, um, intercollegiate junior college sports program. And we have a community college here called Isothermal Community College, which I attended and graduated from. And I really think that once this pandemic's over with and things get recovered, the local community college needs to do that, needs to start an athletic program again. We've got a lot of baseball talent here that doesn't go to college, and baseball is for the most part, a fairly, in an organizational aspect, a fairly inexpensive sport. You've got, you know, baseballs are expensive to a degree, but you buy them in bulk, you can kind of find a pretty good deal on them. Uh, maintaining a baseball field is not easy, but Isothermal would be able to get to use um, McNair Field in Forest City because it's generally not used outside of uh, Forest City Owl games and the occasional high school game. So you could utilize that. Um, there are other fields that could be utilized in high school until there is a proper field built. You could use, you, basketball is a quick, easy way because really all you have to really provide are balls, uh, uniforms, Shoes, I think. I don't know if colleges provide that or JUCO. I don't know how they do it on JUCO, but um, that's something that we really because we've got talent here on the basketball that could play basketball at a junior college level. That I mean, the, the, the talent here, some of the better talent goes to the goes to college, but some of the talent that really could potentially be benefit from going to junior college and could get a four-year scholarship with a transfer uh, with a junior college program. So I really think that's something Isothermal should think about in the future, is uh, getting started in inter intercollegiate inter inter athletics again. 
they had teams in the 60s and the 70s, and then um, the decision was made to get away from that because they were afraid it was going to compromise the academic mission of the college. And I think nowadays, uh, I really think that you can have a intercollegiate program at Isothermal and still maintain the ac academic integrity of the, of the college. I think the, the pros far outweigh the cons, in my opinion. Oh, what else? Um, well, hockey season is about to begin, and it's going to be a shorter season than usual. Here's my take on it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're not going to have NHL players at the 2022 Olympics. I think, though, I, I, I'm not 100% sure if that's true or not. If they do, great, because I think that really helps out. Here's my take on it. The World Cup should, the NHL run World Cup should come back, but it should come back on even years that are not Winter Olympic years. And it should be basically like the, the format for the Olympics. And have the All-Star Game every, other, every odd numbered year. And have it mean to where you have the results of two years of play and the player the players that have over the course of two seasons would be get would be voted in by the players I'm not so much big about the fans um, voting anymore because to me it's just it's become a popularity contest and I think if the players had a vote in it and the coaches and the the, to a certain extent, the media. You couldn't vote for, for yourself if you're a player. You'd have to li limit, limit the number of teammates you could vote for. A coaches, you couldn't vote for your own players either. Uh, and you could have a system where you could have a select committee also vote for all-stars and such, and to where it could be a respectable decision made about who should be on, involved on this. And, you know, have it... I like the way the NHL's got it, where you have it by divisions now, and and all of that. I think basketball may benefit from that <laughs> in a strange way. You know, all star games nowadays are not what they once were. You know, because there's so much player movement, you don't have the loyalty to the teams anymore. You don't have loyalties to your divisions or your conferences anymore. So really we should they should be basically fun exhibitions where it's about fan engagement it's about basically entertainment you know where your people aren't expect you have it like being let it be an offensive showcase and such and you know I like the idea of NBA Saturday shoot Saturday show whatever they do it the Saturday competitions are really cool on the NBA, and the NHL has their equivalent of it. The NFL should develop their own version of it, um, and so should Major League Baseball, outside of just the home run derby, you know. But I, I think that there's a lot that could be said about um, All-Star Games. And, I, and I've said in the past, I think it, it would benefit to get rid of them, but I think they're still, in a way... A role for them. It's just you're not basically having it be something like a very, very serious competition. So the reward for excellence. So, um, yeah. Here's here's another thing. We have in this country forgotten that sports is supposed to be fun. It's become so deadly serious that we have, even at the Little League level, parents and coaches going absolutely nuts when decisions go against. And I think we really got to focus back on understanding that this is wins and losses at that level are not the end of the world. I'm not one of these people that go, well, we shouldn't take keep score and all that. We should 
keep it into perspective that if a kid loses his ball game, it's not the end of the world. And if he wins, it's not the greatest thing that ever happened to him, you know. <laughs> I never played sports to just win. I wanted to play have play sports to have fun, you know. Yeah, I like being competitive, but they're supposed to be fun too, you know. Because let's face it, the one thing we've learned through this pandemic is we don't really need sports as much as we think we do. <laughs> Some people do. But in general, we could do without them. And that's something to, to remember. Sports are entertainment, okay? And I think that the one thing we should take away from all of this is that we don't need billion-dollar stadiums and arenas. We need to re renovate the, the arenas that are already there to bring them up to whatever the specs are for the leagues and such. If you've built an arena and you're tearing it down after 20 years, um, why? <laughs> Unless it's been poorly maintained and that's on you. If it's properly maintained, I, I keep, I'm, I'm still angry about the fact that the Atlanta Braves moved from Turner Field to Truist Park now. Yes, I know that there's a reason for it. The, the transportation thing was bad at Turner Field. Those things can be fixed, okay? Those things can be fixed. And, yeah, it may be better at Truist Field and all of that, but the truth of the matter is, this is money that did not need to be spent. And, you know, it still bugs me. It still bugs me the fact that Charlotte had to build a new arena to get an NBA team when they could have re easily renovated the old Charlotte Coliseum and um, ha built it up to NBA specs. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And now you've got football stadiums that are, I mean, ridiculous. I mean, look at, look at Charlotte. They had, at, at one point, that was a great stadium, and now it's, maybe we're one of the oldest stadiums in the NFL now. Um, and people are like, well, we need, we need to build a new stadium. Renovate it, put a retractable roof on it. You may have to play out of, away from it for a year or two. But why t tear that down completely, can completely get rid of it, and build a new stadium somewhere else when you can just renovate that one right there? Maybe you have to play a year or two away from, from Bank of America Stadium. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. And unfortunately, I don't think we're going to learn that lesson. We may slow it down for right now, but once the economy rebounds, people are like, well, um, <laughs> we need to have a new stadium for... Tampa? Tampa? <laughs> Their stadium's over 20 years old now, I think. Um, there are a lot of things I would like to talk about right now. Just trying to... I, I'm really, really, really just brainstorming here right now. Um, just trying to get relaxed after the tense day of yesterday and last night and all this with the, all the insanity going on there. So, um, yeah... Uh, there's been talk about um, Deshaun Watson going to uh, to be traded from from Houston, and some of the Carolina Panther fans are thinking that might be a good idea to pursue him. I think if you could make it work under the cap and not give up a ton for him, would he be worth losing the the draft pick for the first round draft pick this year for? Yeah, but how much more would we have to give up? We obviously aren't going to give up Christian McCaffrey. We're obviously not going to give up um, any of the players that have really started this year. Obviously, Teddy Bridgewater would be in the mix because, you know, Houston would need a quarterback. And Bridgewater would at least give them an opportunity to, pun intended, bridge over to the next 
and you know they could use that draft pick we give them to to draft a quarterback. And Bridgewater could be a potential guy that could get them um, to where they need to go. I think th I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about this because in reality, it wouldn't take a whole lot to bring Houston back to being a competitive team with the right coach. And do you really want to get rid of him? Um, I think that if I am the McNair family and the McNair family uh, is Robert, Robert McNair, the late owner of the team, is actually from this area, Forest City, North Carolina. If I'm the McNairs, I hesitate about pulling that trigger until you know you can get the kind of deal that you want that'll, to get, make sure you get you bounce back very quickly. Because Deshaun Watson is a franchise player. So I think you could very well see um, that happen. Oh, man. You know, once this pandemic's over with, once Trump's out of office and we're kind of back to somewhere close to normal, I hope we can re-embrace re re sports to a certain degree. We need sports again to kind of bridge the gap, bridge the boundary, so to speak. And I hope Joe Biden finds a way to get the players that are bending the knee, taking the knee, and get them just to talk to these police officers and such, and to find some way to bridge these gaps and fix these problems. Okay? We just, we, we need to stop complaining about the problems. And fix these damn things, okay? You know, I wish I could have a platform to, to fix them. I, I mean, I don't, I can only do so much. But, truth be told, you know, I'm just a schmuck in Western North Carolina who uh, has a modest job, modest place to live, makes a modest wage, and just has a podcast that, or podcast that he can vent from time to time. So, anyhow, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is what it is. Um, what else am I going to say? <laughs> well, I don't really think I have much else to say. I just wanted to come on here to vent a little bit. Um, I really needed to because the last couple of days have been intense. I mean... I don't really need to go into it. If you know uh, what happened on January 6th and what's going on right now, it is rather intense. So, um, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to wish you well. And until we talk again, it's good night, good luck, and may the good news be yours.